So here's the basic circuit for my uh, BC547 transistor based stock sensing circuit. Uh, I made another one using another chip LM386 but I'm interested in showing you another feature that I can add to this dark sensing light. This is one of my dark sensing light. It uses a uh, lithium ion battery and it powers three LED and it is so uh, light sensitive, turns on at night, turns off at, in the daytime. By the way, I've been running this light for almost a week now without having to recharge it. Maybe it's on like 18 hours a day for the rest of the 5-6 hours because it's bright, uh, the light turns off. So the, the feature that I'm, I'm thinking I'm uh, going to show you is uh, a remote control feature. Now for those of you that is interested in this circuit, this is it. You can freeze frame your video if you want to. Or this is available widely on the internet. Uh, you just Google dark sensing circuit and you can find it. So this is the breadboard where I first tested the circuit. This is another circuit that I that I worked on for an audio amplifier using LM386. Yeah, so the feature that I added to this dark sensing light is the remote control. This is a remote control. Um, I think YouTube will legalize hemp. Recommended that I, you know, I can do this. And this is the remote unit. Basically, the remote unit or the sensing unit powers up 5 to 24 volt. You have the power in here and you have the power out to your LED. So basically what I have here, this is the power out positive to my resistor that goes to the positive leg of the LED. And then uh, the negative leg of the remote sensor goes to the negative leg here to the basically to the negative leg of the LED. And then this circuit is still controlled by the photo sensor. So it goes on if I shade the photo sensor. This has come on at night time and you want some extra control. So you can use, say you want a little dimmer, 25%. Okay, so it's, it's it's a bit dimmer. This would be 100%. You can see the difference. If it's dimmer, I guess you save a little uh, power. I think there is a chip in here. I'm not sure what exactly is a chip. Probably a 555 timer something that you can build but I bought this because it is cheap enough just a few dollars I forgot exactly how many dollars maybe five or less than that with the remote control and shipping so here's some crazy things you can do with it like with a 555 timer you can pulse it you can do all sorts of weird things which you wouldn't do but if you insist on having blinking lights all over your garage you could do that I just bought the single channel one because I don't I don't want Christmas lights uh, really you could you the wiring would be a little more complicated I think there'll be four wires instead of um, two wires so everything gets a slightly more complicated so I just use a single color okay let's uh, let's blink this Okay, it's blinking. That's one 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 way. There's a slower blink. You can have the speed control here. 
you can press it, it blinks faster. Change the mode again. This, this is like a flickering. I don't know if you can see it. This is a slow flicker. And this is yet another on off. If you're a nervous person, you probably shouldn't use this kind of uh, device. It just makes you crazy. Like I said, you can vary the speed. Press speed negative, speed positive, speed up, speed down. This is radio frequency control, so you can uh, do this in sunlight, there's no problem. Actually, you wouldn't be doing it in sunlight, but you know what I mean. And switch it back down to 25% uh, so it's not so bright. Yeah, so this is the crazy thing that you can do with it. The only thing I uh, am a little concerned is uh, maybe you have to get an extra one of the remote so you can turn the light on uh, in your garage from outside your house and you can have more than one remote so you can have it in different rooms if you want to. Maybe you can clone the signal to this. Okay, this is how you turn it off. Turn it on. Power on, power off. Very neat. And you can imagine all the crazy things you can do with this. For me, it's just an option. I'm not going to actually use this on my solar sensing light. I bought strip lights. They yeah, a big set of strip lights like this. I'm gonna actually use this remote with a strip light, and I'm gonna. This is waterproof. Uh, there are 300 LEDs on this. I'm gonna cut off a strip, and you don't have to use the whole thing. Cut cut off whatever you need, and then just solder it or. The connectors that they sell, you can connect them and channels that you can put them in. The base, uh, the back is 3M. You can just stick it on what wherever, because it's waterproof, so it will probably last. Um, if you keep it under the sun, it'll probably probably be better. So this is probably what I'm going to use this with instead of with the dark sensing light, but. I'm just showing you this because if you want, to, if you wanted to, you can, you can uh, add more control to this. Although, I mean, this is more like a novelty. I, I don't think anyone will want this to be blinking all the time. But you might want to have it dim, right? Fifty percent, twenty-five percent. There's also a. Right? I mean, for a normal person, you, you probably just want it to be on 100% of the time. I think the cool thing about this setup is uh, you're making it. You have some off-the-shelf component, of course, and but you have a circuit here that you can modify. You, you can use different numbers of LEDs up to at least four or five, and you control it. Uh, you, I think you get a lot more satisfaction. Of course, you can drive a Ferrari or a whatever expensive car, but if you know how to make it or uh, control it better, then I think it's much more worthwhile. All right, thanks for watching.